Welcome to Mega Net Gaming. This is take two, and we're going to cover some cute games today. Are they good? We will find out. And here we go. We're going to start off with As the Global, a game that I've probably about a dozen people all together have recommended to me. I went ahead and put the website you need to go to to play this version of the game. It's the only version of the game I'm aware of currently. It's a derivative of As the Story and As the Two, which were previously online, originally launching around the 2010 period. So this is about a decade old game. The art style definitely has some anime influence to it. And for for the age, the art style is, I'd say it's a better quality than a game like Fiesta Online. In a lot of ways, this game does play like a more coherent and fun version of Fiesta Online. But that's up to personal opinion. So, with this game, they do they have the standard fetch quests, kill tasks. A lot of different regions to explore. The different regions aren't set up as a big open world, you do go through portals. They're divided off much like Fiesta Online if you played that. But each individual map is pretty sizable. With It is frustrating though because there are quite a few invisible walls as well. It does make a good starter MMO. If you haven't played an MMORPG before. Here, let me get the... We don't need the website on there anymore. If you've never played an MMORPG before, this does make quite a good starting game. It's simple enough to get involved in, yet towards the, as you level up there are some differences as far as classes go, play styles, a few systems as far as improving weapon armor, some basic crafting. It has all the standard features you'd expect in an MMORPG. And it's very easy to tell where the quest is based on the blocks above the heads. The best strategy in this game is to go to an area, collect all the quests you can, and then it'll tell you how far away each quest, each area. It tells you how far away you are from the location where you have to complete the task for the quest. So you can actually plan where you're going quite well, quite easily. So, what are some of the more in-depth parts of this game? There isn't a whole lot you can do as far as character creation. You're, you can change hairstyle, hair color, face type, eye color. You can make some unique variances, but you're likely to find somebody that looks very similar to you in-game. This isn't as complex as your top tier. MMORPGs on the market currently. As far as classes, you get to pick from one of eight playable classes once you hit level 10. You have warrior, archer, and mage, and they're subdivided by type of weapon and play style. So you have your standard DPS and tank divisions. I played as a warrior, so I had the choice between one-handed swords, two-handed swords, and spears, all which have different use. It's very much a cartoony world. The different creatures, there's not a whole lot of explanation in game as to why they're there, and the story elements are a bit weak. It does have kind of the Fiesta Online feel, having stuff just kind of thrown in places. But as far as the combat, the combat's very responsive. Lots of different skills and abilities you can use. And it does become a bit strategic as you're fighting. You have to know which spells to use when, when, how long the timers are for various ones, etc. Very much standard MMORPG fare, but it's at least fun. You do have fishing, digging, and some other things you can do. It 
There is equipment customization and upgrading. One way to make your equipment better is to socket them with salves. And you do that through an NPC in town. When you find the salves, you can purchase them. You can find them by digging. You can find them on monsters or in quests. All your standard ways of finding items in game. You also collect and summon a variety of pets to use. And they have different requirements. You need to find pet eggs. They need an incubator to hatch. And they require different kinds of food. So if you're not looking to do just combat all the time, there are some different things you can do in game to get away from combat. And you have the soulmate system, which helps you become more powerful. You pick another person in game, become their soulmate, share experience points, you get special perks and abilities depending on the level. And at higher levels, you can actually summon your partner to another place. Heal them, you can bring revive them, and it actually acts account wide. I actually didn't find anybody to become a soulmate with. Meg didn't play this game long enough to really get that involved in it. So, yeah, you have a bit, pretty much run of the mill MMORPG here, except the graphics are quite cute. There are a few systems that are interesting and give you something to do other than just grinding. And as far as leveling, it's really not that bad. It's The grind is less than most games. It's quite easy. I didn't play all that much, and I definitely didn't play optimally. And I got to about level 50, I think 52 I got to altogether. As far as the end game stuff is concerned, I didn't get that far. I'm just looking at the the first probably about 10 to 15 hours of the game for a new player. And as far as that goes, the combat is serviceable and actually quite fun at times. The world offers some unique artwork to look at. And you have the salve system and some item customization systems that are interesting, as well as the pet summon system and the soulmate system. So yeah, it's, I, I give it a soft recommend. If you're interested, check it out. It's not the most populated game. But as far as my interactions with the community, my interactions with the community were all top notch. If this was a great based on community interactions, this would be an A plus game. Fortunately, the game just didn't quite offer enough for me to stick around for that long. But if you're into this art style or looking for a good MMO to get started in, definitely check this one out. And now it's on to the next game that I promised to cover a long time ago and haven't gotten to yet. And that is Elods Online. So, Elods Online, published by Mail.ru, which I believe goes by a different name now, possibly. It's a Russian company. It says initially released February 16, 2010. There is a subscription server and a free-to-play server. And the free-to-play server does have quite a... Does have systems that are pay to win. And from what I've been told, the subscription server... The game's actually quite a bit more fun without the pay to win stuff. However, you're paying a subscription and it's not very well populated. So this is a... It's a fantasy-themed MMORPG with a lot of sci-fi elements mixed in. And you do have the potential to get an airship later on in the game, which I didn't get that far. As the astral sailing. It's very much a World of Warcraft style game, similar combat, similar classes. You have some unique races in the game. Well, outside the standard orcs and humans, what was the name of those guys? Let me pull up a picture of them for you. Should have been more prepared. Here we go. Let's get a nice little picture of these guys.
Okay, it's not wanting to save. But yeah, the giverlings are three little, little mammalian style pets. You actually play all three of them. You have all the standard, all the standard character builds here. You have your archers, warriors, mages, etc. Once you re reach level 21, that's when PvP is an option. There's two factions. And assuming this world was more populated than it is, it would actually be quite dangerous as you start to venture out further and further. Because you have mobs. Most of the mobs are slightly difficult for your level. I wouldn't say that difficult, but they're above average in difficulty of if you compare the level, your level to the character's level, compared to other games. Unless you know exactly what you're doing and have a highly optimized build, you're not just going to slaughter everything. So yeah, once you get to... Once you get to, I believe, level 35 is when you have the option of getting the Astral Ship. I didn't make it that far. I made it to the late 20s. The art design is quite... It's done quite well. I was pl playing with as an orc for the most part. There's a city that very much resembles a communist Russia theme type place. And that's when you go anywhere in the town, everything fits the theme quite well. And much like WoW, its art style is quite well done. It's, sty it's a stylized art style that holds up quite well, despite it being the game getting older. It holds up, I'd say, much better than a lot of classic games like Eka and Cabal. As far as skill progression goes, each class has a talent tree and three talent grids. And at level 10 is when you unlock the talent grid. You can actually make some quite a variety of builds by doing so, but for the most part, if you're wanting an optimal build, I would suggest looking for a guide. Especially given the PvP element, it is quite easy to make a build that is suboptimal, and it's going to take a long time to level. And then you're going to get slaughtered when the PvP time comes. So yeah, the questing is quite a mixed bag. There's some quite awful fetch quests in there. Some seemingly meaningless kill tasks. But mixed in with all that are some fairly well done story quests that help with world building. But yeah, this is a game where the music and art design is actually quite well done. With a fair amount of soundtrack actually being listenable outside a game. But yeah, it does get a bit repetitive. On the free-to-play server, you're hampered by people that are willing to pay quite a bit of money to become more powerful, and you're not going to stay in a chance with those people on the free-to-play server if you don't pay the money. And the amount of money that some people pay is exceeding is going into the three digits per month cost. But yeah, if you don't mind the very sparse population, I'd definitely check this out. Get a, get a one month sub, play it for the month. If you enjoy it, keep subbing, or you can even check out the free to play server to see if the base game minus the XP that's held back and other issues of playing on the free to play server. If you're, if those are only things that bother you, then this might be the perfect game to check out. It's another game I give a soft recommend to, and if it's based on just my interactions with the community, the community here was quite friendly and helpful, despite there not being that many people I interacted with. So yeah, music art style is great. There's some interesting systems here. There's some great world building and story content mixed in with some quite grindy, quite grindy story and quite grindy quests mixed in with all that and the free-to-play server is quite
quite the grind, given it appears they hold back a percentage of your experience. I don't know if that's changed since I've played, though. So yeah, two MMOs, uh, Asda, and Elods. Not the best MMOs on the market. Not even close to being in my top 25 list. But they are above average, and both offer... They definitely offer enough content where if you want to play something different for the weekend or for the week or maybe even for the month, there's enough there. You just look through some of my old odds and as the videos, there's plenty of people out there. They'll hop on the game and help you out and play. And moving on from that, let's go to a couple games that aren't MMOs that offer multiplayer. We are going to move on to Bubble Bobble for DOS. Yes, this is the Bubble Bobble release for MS DOS. I was using a keyboard and using DOS Box to emulate, given I don't have a DOS machine hooked up at the moment to test this on. This game was initially re released in the arcade by Taito in 1986. And it's on numerous platforms. My personal favorite is the outside the arcade version would be a Nintendo version. The PlayStation remake and the Saturn remake are quite well done as well. As are many of the sequels of the game. There's also a a version of the original coupled with a new version for Game Boy Advance called Bubble Bobble Old and New. But we'll focus specifically on this version. I have the Adlib soundtrack playing, and while it's not a perfect rendition of the original song, it is close enough and in its own right it's quite... it fits the game quite well. It's one of those songs that despite playing for quite a long time in the game, it really doesn't get old. Using the keyboard, the game's quite responsive. At times the game appeared to be playing a bit too fast, but it seems that that's just how this game plays compared to other versions. It is slightly different than the NES and other ports. But yeah, Bubble Bubble is great on any platform. And even if you played it to death on other ones, if you haven't played them as DOS one, some of the slight differences in the art design and the new ad, well not new, but the different Adlib soundtrack does make it a unique experience. And the patterns of the enemies are different from other versions, so it does, does change the game a bit. And yeah, playing with a keyboard versus a controller also adds a different, just a change in control when you need super highly responsive controls, switching to keyboard it didn't seem as responsive as other versions, but that also could be the fact I'm playing it on an emulator. But yeah, this port, it's well done. Definitely a game I would highly recommend if you're trying to complete a, do a collection of MS-DOS games. And now on to one last game, and it's going to be the odd game of the bunch. This is Boppin' for MS-DOS. I was going to do the Amiga version of both Bubble Bobble and Boppin' as well, but I'll cover those a different week. Basically the story in Boppin' is an evil villain captured all the enemies from video games, leaving the heroes with no work. They become unemployed. So your goal is to complete a bunch of puzzles. And by completing those puzzles, you will unlock the enemies and set them free. I definitely do recommend getting a manual for this game to learn the controls and the different intricacies. Oh, I can't speak today. 
I definitely can't speak today. But yeah, it's as far as the DOS version is concerned, compared to other versions, the Amiga version I noticed didn't have the soundtrack playing the whole time. Now, for some people, this highly discordant soundtrack might not be to your taste. It's definitely a unique soundtrack for sure. It either somebody that's a brilliant composer purposely created a really odd discordant soundtrack to help with world building because you're in quite the odd setting as quite an odd creature. Or this was just something somebody randomly threw together while they were drunk. Hard to tell. But either way, I love the soundtrack. Many other people will be looking for the mute button or just turning the sound off. Like I said, the Mega version just turns the sound off altogether. However, it also seem the Mega version does seem to be missing some animations as well. But yeah, once you get used to the controls, it is the puzzles start off very. Uh, as long as you know the controls, the puzzles start off very simple, and they get progressively harder and harder. You do want to make sure you're trying to get as many points as possible because that will determine how difficult your final boss fight is. So yeah, Boppin, it's an odd puzzle platforming game. Definitely a unique game of its kind. One of my favorites for both the unique gameplay, the odd puzzles, the strange discordant music, and the odd mix of both cute and hyper-violent graphics. It's a unique experience and one of my favorites for DOS. But yeah, what seems to be a harmless puzzle game does have some graphic violence in it, so it's not really a game for kids. So yeah, there you go. Elad's Asda, Boppin, and Bubble Bobble. All four games to check out. And that's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And actually, you know what? I'm going to check really quick how much... How much is... Oh yeah, Boppin is available as freeware. And as far as Bubble Bobble goes, if you want the MS-DOS copy... Let me see what a copy goes for on eBay at the moment. Oh, that's an arcade board. But yeah, for it looks like between 10 and $30 you can find a copy on eBay, depending on how... depending on whether you want... It looks like these are... Wait, these are later versions. Yeah, it looks like there's CD and floppy versions on eBay for a variety of prices, but the prices are under $50 at least. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and have a great day.